welcome to the session. My name is Josh Lee and I'm from Canberra, Australia. For those still think Sydney is the capital of the nation, well, Canberra is that capital. Um, so um, I'm going to talk about the project I've been working on. Um, it's about how we use Drupal to create a site to serve the global biosecurity community. And a little bit about myself. Um, this is my Drupal ID and it's my Twitter. And I'm a Drupal developer in Tenorcraft uh, in Australia. And uh, I've been in Drupal community for almost six years. And um, um, in those years, I spent most of my time in Australian government public sector. And a module, I'm a module maintainer, and this is my second DrupalCon. Well, um, my first DrupalCon was in Sydney, so I have to say that um, it's really hard for guys in Australia to attend any DrupalCon in America or Europe. So um, I have to thank my camp leaves me here. All right, um, let's get the story started. And uh, this is a cute Australian wombat. Well, given the fact that um, I've been working closely with my client, which is Australian Government Department of Agriculture, Animal Biosecurity Branch, um, I think it would be, um, be cool to actually add some random Australian animals photo in my slides, so just in case you guys are sleepy. And um, I'm pretty sure that clients are really happy about me doing this. All right, so the story started with the uh, policy makers from Australia government and New Zealand government, which are Department of Agriculture and uh, Ministry of Primary Industries you know, in New Zealand. What do they do? Um, so um, these are the descriptions I got from my client. I don't really want to read it, but in my own words, I think what they do is they're making the policies of making the decision which country they actually import the animal or plant product from. Um, so the last item actually I put in bold because um, I think it's related to my project. So actually um, they provide independent scientific advice, social analysis, and science-based quarantine and policy advice. Right, so it's too long. A better example. Anyone here been in Australia before? Okay, so you Australian. <laughs> um, so, all right, so let me exp explain. So if you arrive in Sydney airport or Melbourne airport, you may see this lovely puppy smelling on your luggage because this is one of our colleagues um, to make sure that you are not bringing in any unregistered animal or plant product into our nation. So they are mainly the goalkeeper for the countries. Another example, if they find out um, there's a country happen to have foot and mouth disease outbreak, then they will decide not to import any related product from that country. And if they find out any other countries are actually importing the animal products from those countries, they will stop import from those countries too. So um, how can they actually get the information? That's a question. Um, Depart Department of Agriculture realized that, um, well, um, they have to find the information in time. Um, so they have a delicate team of news detectors. What they do daily is go to Google and Google about the diseases and uh, about the biosecurity news is around the world and they put all the URLs into a spreadsheet and they go through the spreadsheet and you know go visit all of the URLs and if find that article is really important then they actually pass that article into the right branch who actually make the policy. Apparently that's a really pain process. Um, so um, the department thinks, well, maybe we can actually ask the machine to do some job for us. Then the scientists actually design the prototype with Google Blog and Python. Well, it's a really a um, early stage of news aggregator. So um, actually doing the job, um, it passes the queries into Google, Google API and um, um, get everything returned. 
um, but it only actually focus on aquatic animal news. Well, there are different branches and plants or animals and aquatic animals. Um, so the department said, well, this is a really awesome tool. Uh, we really need to share the information to other branches, even other departments, even other country. Um, but um, it seems like uh, this prototype doesn't really work that way for us. So uh, we need to think about how can we actually build a system that we can actually share to other people. This is where I was from. Um, by the way, this is uh, Ibis the bird. Um, if you go to um, Sydney, you may find this is quite common in Sydney's road. Um, it stands for International Biosecurity Intelligence System. So, first of all, why Drupal? This is a right, really um, popular question when you attend any DrupalCon. They always, why you use Drupal? Well, I really, I asked the same question to my client too. Um, they had two reasons. First of all, th the first reason, well, Drupal is awesome. You have lots of modules that actually can match their requirements. Second reason, which is the uh, most important reason, um, they chose Drupal because we have a really big community here, which we're all living in. Um, the department actually um, decided to outsource the project to uh, the contractors or Drupal shops because everyone in the community are actually working in Drupal, uh, uh, contribute their time and the skills into the community, so we all know Drupal. Um, then when um, they decide to actually transfer the project from one contractor to another contractor or from another Drupal shop to another Drupal shop, um, actually it can minimize the transition time. So because we already know what is Drupal, and everyone is doing it in Drupal way, so it's really easy to handle. Um, so the site was developed in Drupal 6, and then it migrated into Drupal 7. Um, it's, a, it's a real online system that actually serves the biosecurity group, uh, community by providing the following functions. So um, the system actually allows people to create their own search queries. Uh, let me explain that a little bit. Um, we define the search sources in the system. Like we have two kinds of sources. One is untrusted source, the other one is trusted source. Untrusted source is mainly uh, the, re the search result from Google. So Google is the untrusted source because you don't really know if um, the information is related or it's genuine or trusted source. So the researchers may find, well, um, some articles from whichever RSS feed are really useful. Uh, they want to know that um, the RSS can, can be from um, the authority, from the government, from the research entities. So um, people can subscribe their, uh, submit their own RSS feed and create their own search queries. The system will actually search for them. Also, uh, we have to support multi-language because, well, um, the main goal for the system is, well, we really want to know the fresh news, what happened in your country. Um, for example, if um, um, people can talk about, oh, I really see some animal died in my yard, or um, I'm a farmer, I, I noticed that my plants start to get sick or something. Um, if um, this happened in a non-English country, people won't actually tweet about it or talk about it in English in the first time. Well, you have to wait for like a day or two until the government actually released the report saying that we have a problem. So um, the, the site have to um, search in their native language. Then we can actually get the fresh news from them. Then um, another thing, the site need the workflow because we have articles from the untrusted source then we need the people to actually have a look at article to decide uh, whether this is related or not. So the workflow is really important. They can actually change the state of the article. All of the users will have their own preferences on the site. And um, um, we will send out the daily digest email to the registered users according to their preferences. 
Well, I'm really glad that um, um, in Dre's keynote yesterday, um, he was talking about uh, the future internet. So we are going to push the information to the end users. And I was thinking, uh, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of doing this in Drupal 7 already. Um, so um, I was going to compare Ibis with Fleetboard. Will anyone here use Fleetboard or Fitly? Um, it's a really useful tool that you can you can actually subscribe to all kind of news that you are interested. In. Like uh, you go in there and um, you set up your your set preferences. Like I want to know all of the dead fish around the world, and um, a Fleetboard or Fitly will push that information to you, but not all of the information. Um, they always think they filter the information for you. Oh, okay. Um, I think this is right information for you, then I'm going to filter every other information out. Uh, we're not doing that. That's the main difference between Ibis and Fitly or Flipboard. We're trying to push all kind of information to you. Um, why? We're not filtering anything. Um, because, well, even the information is kind of like a fault information. We still want to know that. So the researchers want to know uh, why even this is for information, you still put it online. Uh, where is this from? Uh, there's going to be a reason on behind. And uh, um, maybe it's published by some um, global trader. Uh, they want to actually beat their competitors or something. Um, it's actually related to the biosecurity community. All right. How it works? I'm trying not to um, go to go to too deep uh, about the code, but um, this is a high level about how our system is working. Um, CR means uh, web crawler. So the web crawler is triggered by the cron job every day. And what it, what it do, it, it will grab all of the search queries in our system to Google. And Google will use the Google API to actually doing the search job and return the result. Well, the result actually include the title, and summary and um, other, of course, the URL. Then we pass the URL to uh, third-party web services that include uh, jail names, um, Alchemy API. I'll explain what are those later. Um, those web services will, will actually analyze the URL for us and uh, what is the article for us, then uh, grab everything we want to create a node in Drupal. Then we will save the node into our system. That's simple. This is what inside of the crawler. So um, you may see we have like a two kind of content types. One is search source. Uh, the other one is search query. The user can create um, search source node and search query. Um, we have two queues. They are all using Drupal queues, by the way. Um, the search queues uh, is triggered by the current job and it will actually pull all of the search queries submit from the user into the queue and by cron job. Well, if you guys know how Drupal queues work, the cron job will, um, will actually trigger the queue to actually process the item in the queue. Um, it will actually push it into Google API, the internet, find out all of the articles, and save the URL or all of the inform um, released information into the result queue. Um, Currently, uh, the way we design it in um, to uh, make it working parallel, we have search source as the um, result queue. So each search source will be a single queue. So actually, we are processing uh, multiple queues in the same time. And this is our um, query builder. I'm not sure if you can see. It. I'll just um, explain. So on the top. Uh, we have the uh, search entity type, and you can choose if you have a host or um, you want to search for person disease name. And if you choose host, in the second drop down list, we have search entity. Um, if it's a host, then currently it's a wild bird. Um, you can choose, you know, fish or any kind of animals or plant name in it. Or if you, cho if you choose um, the person disease name in the first drop down list, um, search entity will be changed into all kind of peasant disease name stored in our system. The third drop-down list is the language, 
of course you want to search for you know different language and um, that will do it for you so the most important part um, is the query expression builder for those don't really know um, what is the format for Google query um, this builder will actually create the query for you so the first column is the host name that you already chose you already choose um, the second column is a qualifier so the qual qualifier can be uh, like uh, the word dead death disease illness so you want to search for like a fish dead in whichever country um, the third column you have block terms um, this will actually filter a lot of results for you giving the example if you want to know something about Apple you probably don't really want to know um, something about Samsung because that will be totally unrelated if you have Samsung in the article and Apple well, that would be technical questions um, so you put all of the word you want to avoid in the block terms and the block site is like a, um, if I want to search for um, anything in the around the world I don't really want um, articles from IBIS into my result queue and if you know some other website that, that is totally unrelated, you can actually block it. Then um, I'll, I'll try to actually make it bigger. Um, do, oh, let's not do that. And um, uh, under the um, query expression builder, we have the around tick. Um, for you guys, if you, you, you know about Google queries, uh, the around filter is really helpful. Um, giving the example, um, I want to search for wild bird and dead. And I, want, well, I only want the result that with um, have three words in between these two search keywords then I put around three if I put like a, around 10 then Google will actually return like a, anything result between you know 10 words even between these two keywords um, and we can actually generate the uh, query um, in the bottom of course that's ed editable by you so if you know Google queries you can actually create your own Google query and that will actually save into the system here we go. Um, so that's time to explain what is the jail names and Alcoin API. So we want to know uh, which country or where this disease happened. So jail names will actually analyze the article for you um, and find out where this is happening uh, by the keywords. And it will return um, the geolocation information about latitude, longitude. Uh, so we can save the, save the node and display in the map view Alchem API is a really awesome tool um, it's actually returning all of the metadata uh, including uh, title author create time um, sentiment to to you and you have you have all of the related uh, information you want to build a new node and this is the API page from Alchem API by the way, I need to thank for um, Alchemy API to um, support, uh, sponsors. Um, so you can tell from here, so it can actually analyze the sentiment. So if you know this article is negative or positive, um, and the uh, text extraction, um, you want to know what is the content of this URL. Um, it will actually return it for you. Uh, also, the image information, if there's an image in this URL, then they will actually tell you um, what is this information about. Um, the authors, also, I just received the email uh, two days ago from Alchemy Pass saying that they just released a new service. Um, they now actually support uh, new searching functions. So uh, we are planning to actually add Alchemy Search into our site. So um, in Alchemy, um, you just pass the uh, web service to Alchemy, ask Alchemy to search everything for you. Actually, uh, Alchemy can actually go into uh, whichever online forum and find out all of the negative, positive information for you. So um, beside Google, we have Alchemy now.
end. After we have the article in our system, it's time to um, allow us to introduce our evaluator. So by the way, this is a Tasmanian devil. Um, this lovely animal only lived in Australian uh, Tasmanian island. Um, it's an uh, endangered animal. Um, I found that the face of this um, Tasmanian devil quite similar as our evaluators. Um, I will explain why they're struggling. Um, of course, the first reason is the diagram on the right. Um, I know you can't really read the, the, the text out or explain. Um, so this is actually the workflow. The article workflow in IBIS. So you guys know what is the workflow module in Drupal. You will know what, I'm what I'm talking about. So when we have a new article, the, de the machine will detect, oh, is this article from a trusted source or not trusted source? So is this from Google or is it from RSS feed? If it's from Google, then all right, we set the state to roll. If it's from RSS feed, then we're probably going to keep it in our system. So um, the evaluator will go in to find out all of the raw articles, well, because they have the, you know, the professional background in barrel security. They know whether this article is related or not. If it's not related, it's about Apple and Samsung fight, they will actually trash it. And the cron will actually delete a uh, lot of the trash article every day. And if it's already a kept article, and they will actually evaluate the article um, whether it's really important or not. If it's really important for um, our stakeholders, then they will actually promote this article, or it's extremely important, they will actually send an alert straight away. Um, our daily digest email will be sent out every day um, with all of the promoted article information and alert. And this is a interface that our evaluator had to face every day. Uh, you see it's, it's, it's big, bad design with a really big map um, in the middle and with really long filters on the left hand side. So well, the filter actually gave you all of the options. You want to search for whichever taxonomy you want to search for, um, which channel is from. For example, you want to see all of the articles from the trusted source or you want to search all, all the articles from Google. And then we will, it will actually give you a really long article list in the bottom. And I'm not going to display the whole page because it will be really long list. And then we have like a pager. So um, the evaluator had to go into the long list and click into the article to find out whether it's related. That's why they're struggling. And this is what we are producing every day. So daily digest. Um, in here, you can see we have like a three sections. Uh, section one, plant health. Section two, aquatic animal health. Section three, terrestrial animal health. So um, in each column, we have the link to our site. And we know uh, what time this article is produced. And then we know which country is the article from. Of course, we have the original link linking you to the original site and we, we, where we get it from. And um, currently, I think our site will have almost 4,000 users uh, from the world, and they all rely on these daily digests we produce. All right. It's time to talk about the problems. For those who haven't seen this video in YouTube, kangaroo fight really happen in our neighborhood. The biggest problem in the system, of course, is the performance. So um, our site had like a five hour or six hour sleeping time every day. Why? I think because of this design. So let me explain that to you. So this is our current architecture. You see, we have Drupal. And we have everything in Drupal. So the forum, the email, the uh, you know CM, the actual CMS, um, the third-party enhancement, and the web crawler. 
this is good and bad. Why? Well, the web crawler can actually use a lot of features from Drupal. Um, for example, like are we using um, the Drupal Q class. That's really handy. But for your information, we are getting 10,000 search results every day from the web crawler. That doesn't really include the articles from the RSS feed. And uh, you have to allow the time to for the, the, the server to process all of the results. And we are struggling. Um, given the fact that 60% um, uh, of the users are from Australia and New Zealand, so we try to uh, you know, push the processing time into our sleeping time. But that was actually really bad for the European guys. Uh, we're getting more users from different countries. Uh, we have new users from a Canadian government, from um, Malaysian government, from Indonesia, um, from European. Um, we need to make the site accessible for all of the guys in different time zones. And uh, the data structure, that's another problem, which is causing the performance issue. Um, let me um, explain what is the structure like. We have article content type, which is a search result. And you want to know um, what is uh, related information about search result, then we have a field collection called places. In the field collection, we have geo information, like a, a field of longitude, a field of latitude, and you know, um, all of the country's name. And for you guys know that, if you guys know um, what is the module called um, field collection? So the field collection is, is a module that actually allow you to uh, combine different fields into one content type. So you want to group different fields in one, con one content type, that will actually do the job for you. Um, it's a great module, but you have to use it wisely. I'm not using it wisely at the moment. Um, because field collection w is an uh, entity in Drupal. So if you want to know uh, everything contained in field collection, you have to load the load entity first, and you will actually get the taxonomy number or um, anything related in that object. Then you have to load the term again to find out the content. So it's not really handy. And then we have another field collection called delivery method. In it, we will have a content type called um, search. So actually, that includes all of this related information about like a, when this search launched and how long it will take. Um, in the search content type, we have another two entity reference linking to the search query node and the search source node and other taxonomy. You see, this is really complicated. And if you want to actually load one article, how many tables in the back end you have to join? I haven't counted yet, but I, it's a lot. And uh, think about if you want to actually run the search function, how many tables it will actually join and uh, how long it will actually take. So uh, this is our problem. And a better view from New Relic. What they told, me, told us is, uh, well, the search query actually took like a 30% of the system time. And um, uh, the field collection article places almost 30%. Node, if you want to load a node, that's 25%. And recently I made the change to remove the uh, discovery field collection. So actually it went down to and uh, 5%. So this is telling me the same story. Like a, like something wrong with that structure. All right, we have to fix this. And this is a really common bird called cockatoo. Um, this bird actually visits my front yard every day. Right, this is a potential solution for ibis or oh, I can think about for any kind of like a news aggregator, they, they, they can't really have the crawler in their web server. So um, what do we do? We remove the crawler from the web server. We 
create a dedicated server just to run the crawler to protect the web server. So um, if you can see this diagram, uh, we think we keep all of the Drupal related functions like what Drupal is good at, like organic groups, cool. Uh, the email is cool, the CMS is cool. We will keep it in Drupal, but we put the crawler outside. And we think we need to actually use NoSQL in the backend to store documents in the flat way. Why is it really good? Because even your crawler is running like 24 hours a day, you don't need to worry about your website. Because your website is still, still there, people actually go in there and see stuff. And the crawler is busy in doing its job. Um, the hard part for this diagram is we need to create the interface between Drupal and the backend. Um, so when people request one article, um, we know which article we need to actually find from the backend database. So um, Drupal actually can request in the backend database and find out the article for you. Um, for your information, um, when I say no, no SQL database in here, I'm thinking um, Elasticsearch um, in my mind, but it's not confirmed. <laughs> um, if we go with Elasticsearch, then we will have the reporting and analyze, uh, analyze, um about database behavior and uh, uh, the user behavior out of the box straight away. Um, for you guys don't really know uh, what is Elasticsearch, um, it is not a searching engine. Um, it is a NoSQL database similar to MongoDB. Um, of course, I know that um, Chicks have been working um, in Drupal 8 integrated with uh, MongoDB. Um, there's an online video about that. If you guys are interested, you can have a look. So um, it's really exciting. So Drupal 8 can actually completely installed in MongoDB. Yay. And uh, another plan or another problem we have now is the user experience. So it's, it's a really common understanding uh, between our clients. Um, well, um, all of the users are passive users. So we have like a lot of users from different countries. What they want is just our daily digest email. And that's not really our goal. Our goal is to actually allow people to go into our system to evaluate the article themselves. So everyone should be, should be the uh, article evaluator. But they are not at the moment. Why? Because this is an interface. So when you log into the site, you see this, and you know you don't really feel excited about it. Well, what I'm doing in here, um, I, I'm not going to be involved about this long list. I, I don't really know what I this mean. So, how can we actually turn it turn it into um, turn all of the user into active user? This is a proposed new design for our site. So. Um, when people log in, what they should see is what's happening recently around the world. So well, we think people should see what happened in the plant health. For example, like how many articles are promoted, and how many new issues are created in plant health. So they can actually go in there to have a look what is the news. Same as a terrestrial animal and aquatic animal. So the idea was uh, we can't really uh, limit our articles into this kind of like a three categories. Um, we can create different groups. So for example, if you're only interested in the blue tongue, lovely lizard, you can have the group. And uh, um, you can actually create your own search query about blue tongue and uh, promote the um, articles about Blue Town into your own group, and uh, your home page will display what's happening in your own group. Of course, you want to know what is the hot topic and what is trending um, at the moment around the world. So uh, we plan to 
uh, search in Twitter and Facebook uh, to find out uh, what is really a um, popular topic around the world at the moment, uh, what are people are talking about. Um, because, well, um, people won't actually say something um, scientific about what happened in the Twitter account. Um, they will say, oh, what I see today, and that's important for us. So um, I just put these slides here for you guys to compare. Now you love it. All right, what is the future for IBIS? So um, we have contact um, different potential users of IBIS um, to get their idea. And they said, well, you know what? IBIS is really, really awesome tool. And uh, uh, we see the value from IBIS, but we don't really want to know something about biosecurity. We want to know something about you know, food security. Or we want to know something about fashion. But we want to use a tool to actually search in our way. Of course you want. And uh, so um, this is our plan to actually uh, convert it into a generic platform for you. So anyone can actually use uh, the idea of IBIS. We are actually working on the plan. And the next step for IBIS is to um, create the distribution or Drupal modules. I'm not sure because if we're going to use the backend of NoSQL, then I, I don't see the pos possibility that we create either as a distribution. So you can't really install um, the distribution then, uh, because you have to configure the backend. Um, but um, we definitely plan to um, open source our Drupal modules. So uh, there will be a set of Drupal modules available in Drupal.org about others, about news aggregator. So you guys can actually contribute your time to the modules. Um, and uh, it will be actually better for everyone to use it. So it's all of the animals around Australia. Okay. I think that's the end of the slides. And um, any questions? Thank you for not sleeping. <laughs> you got a question? Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, just looking at that with all the different nodes that would be created or the articles, um, yeah. what are your storage considerations like um, as yeah. that grows, obviously? Yes, well, um, because we, uh, we're getting more users every day, um, so which means we have uh, more search queries in the system every day. And currently we have, uh, we, we return like a top five articles from Google research, uh, Google search. And uh, um, if people want to know more about this topic, we have to return, for example, like a top 20 or top 10, then that's, that will be um, the problem for us. Because we currently are really running out of time every day. Uh, so the story, you, do you mean the future storage we propose? Yes. Yeah, so for the NoSQL database? Yeah, so you're going to have to search through a lot of articles yeah. um, as time goes by because it's going yeah. to continue to grow. So the idea, the idea for one is the noise control. So noise control is uh, is the thing is the most important um, topic we need to talk about in any kind of like a news aggregator because um, we try to keep the ratio um, of the noise ratio down. Then um, which means we need to do some work in Google um, and we need to do some work in Drupal level. So make sure that the article is related so we can actually store it into our database. Um, the second, well, a second way is um, we have to actually uh, work on research on our scalability in our server. Um, since, well, I understand that if we convert um, the database from a relational database into uh, NoSQL, that will be actually, the size will be much bigger than the original database. Um, but that's not really our concern um, because, well, uh, our goal is to get as many as possible so we can actually um, scale uh, the backend database quite large. And um, the idea is uh, we have Drupal as a frontend. Uh, and 
any kind of like a Drupal distribution can all contact to one backend. So the one backend can, can be really big, and it actually, actually I, uh, the backend can actually share all kind of information to different users. So um, it will be a massive database with all kind of information in it, but with a really good um, like a tagging system on it. Yeah, cool. Thanks for that. And um, um, if you guys want to know about news aggregator uh, or how to use Drupal to deploy that, um, drop me a message in Twitter or uh, via Drupal.org. Um, I'm happy to work with you. All right, thank you. Another question? Sure. Yeah. All right. So, um, so the question is about how do you how do you avoid the um, duplication of the of the article? Um, so, uh, we have like two kind of like a filter uh, that working when we process the search result. So, uh, one is um, if the URL is the same in the queue, then we, we don't really push it into the result queue, so we don't actually put um, the um, um, same. Uh, uh, Article in into our system. Another way is uh, we use uh, Alchemy API. Actually, it returns all of the related information. So if we find the title is same, then we don't really want to put it in there. But the thing is, um, even the two articles are talking about the same topic, like a same same kind of outbreak in whichever country. Um, our researchers they want to know different uh, the, the article from different different perspective. So they want to know uh, what the farmers say about it, what the government say about it, what the, what the traders say about it. Um, so it's not really duplicate for us, but um, uh, for any other um, stakeholder, when they think that's you know duplicate, we can always add custom custom filter on it. Um, does it answer your question? Sure. All right. Cool. Thank you.